the Lord just meets with us here on Sunday. He goes home with us. Amen. 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 He goes home with us. <coughs> He's always with us. But, you know, the Lord, He likes, uh, he likes celebration. If anybody likes to party, it's Jesus. <laughs> Jesus likes to party. You know? And He likes to be all centered around Him. He's worthy of it. Amen. Yes. Amen. He's worthy. But Christ being exalted, I believe that God is such so perfect in His way that the exaltation of Himself is... He's worthy of all praise. He's Amen. a great God. He created all things. Amen. But he, he, he made Himself the Son like an unto us. And I believe that Christ will always retain that through all eternity. He will retain that son of the <coughs> part that he is. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. God was in Christ, reconciling the world himself. So I believe that Christ, who was with the Father before the world even was, when he became a man, like an unto sinful man, but he wasn't sinful man. He wasn't born from Adam. Adam, the seed of Adam, was not in him was the seed of God. But he will retain that forever and ever because he was made like unto his brethren. So he was our Lord, he is our Savior, and he is our brother. Amen. 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 He has made himself our brother. Thank God. He's the firstborn. <laughs> He's the first. And so you see how God is. He's exalted above all. He is, he is above all. And yet, He loves us so much that He was willing to come down and to be among us and to share His nature and His Spirit with us. To give to us when we couldn't do for ourselves, He did it all for us. And that's what He wanted to do. So what kind of a God is He? It's beyond words. Amen. Why in the Amen. world would such a God want to have, a, have, have habitation to tabernacle with His people, His creation? But He does. Yes. He does. So I believe when, we, when we're in heaven, when we, when we get there, we're going to celebrate maybe for a million years, you know, we'll start off with, let's, let's, let's take a million years to celebrate. And I, you know what I believe? I believe we're going to see Christ out there dancing with us. Amen. <laughs> we're all going to celebrate and dance and rejoice and sing and all the angels will be there and all the holy people will be there and the prophets will be there and all will be there and all the saints will be there. Christ Himself will be in the middle, the center of it all. And I believe we're going to hear, we're going to hear Him sing we're going to watch him dance and rejoice with his people. That's the kind of God we serve. Mm -hmm. You know, he is worthy of all praise, and yet he is willing to share all that he has with us. The Bible says that we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, and all things that are his, he shares with us. Yes. And that's everything. That isn't just material things or anything else. It's everything that He is in His nature. His joy, His peace, His faith, His love, His spirit, His heart, His mind, His soul, all that He is, He shares with us. And we are made one with Him. Yes. He considers us one with Himself. You know, when, when, when we're married here on earth, God says, the two shall be one flesh. Did you know it says that? Yes. When a man and woman marries, not a man and a man, but a man and a woman. Yes. Amen. Yes. God didn't ordain the other. He ordained a man and a woman. When they get married, God considers them one flesh. Well, when we're born again and we're joined to Christ, we are considered yes. one spirit with Him. Yes. Amen. 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 What a great God we have. Man, that, I mean, that, that's... Uh, there's no words that can express the greatness and the goodness. God's goodness is His, great, is his greatness. <laughs> God's love is as great 
as his greatness, as his power, as, as his ability to do anything. His love. The Bible says that God is love. God is love. God is light. God is truth. God is merciful. God is gracious. God is all these things. And uh, so one, one scripture tells us that God exalted His Word above His name. His Word above His name. What does that mean? Christ is the Word. Yes. Christ is the Word who came and was made flesh. And He was given a name above every name in heaven and earth. So God has exalted His Word. What does He mean? His Son above all. Mm -hmm. And given Him a name above all names. So that what Christ has accomplished at the cross for us, what He has accomplished for us, God has exalted that above all things. Because it's through Him alone that we find God. It's through Him we find God. God gave the, gave the world His commandments on Mount Sinai, and He gave the world His laws and His ordinances, but man didn't have a heart for God. So what did God do through Christ? He gave us a heart, a new heart, a heart like Christ. I give you a, a new heart, a heart of flesh. He gave us Christ. So they will become one with Him. So that's why He came. That's why He came in the flesh, so that He could die for us and give us of Himself to, to be amongst us and partakers with us. Amen. He said, if you drink my flesh, or eat, drink my blood and eat my flesh, says you have a part with me. So his words are spirit and truth. So when we partake of his flesh and his blood, we're partaking of that word, of that, of that spirit of his. Now, the Bible says that God in the beginning wanted to bless man. When he created the world, man put man in it. He wanted, to, he wanted man to be blessed. He wanted man to be blessed, which means he wanted him to prosper and do well and uh, have all that he needed and succeed and everything go well for him. When you bless somebody, that's what you mean. You want, you want things to be, go well with them. Uh, you want them everything to be good for them, uh, to make everything to work out for them. Uh, that's being blessed. God wanted that to be that way for man when he created him, so he blessed man. And man today still enjoys that particular blessing that God gave. But when Christ came, see, when, when, when Adam, first of all, when Adam sinned, he lost that special blessing that he had. That, what was that blessing that he had, that he lost? That communion yes. and fellowship with God. He no longer had it. When he was cast out of the garden and <clears throat> put out of there and he couldn't touch the tree of life any longer. The Lord sent an angel there to guard the way of the tree of life. Remember with a sword? Mm -hmm. Anybody who dare approach it would be killed by the sword. That, that represents the law. So no man can come to God. No man can come to life through the law. If you try to come through the law, you're dead. The law will kill you. If you try to obey the law and all it says to, to find God, you're not going to find Him because the law doesn't bring life. It brings death. So Christ came to restore life and give life to man. That fellowship that man once lost with God, that he had with God, now Christ restores that fellowship with God. <clears throat> so the blessing that, that Adam lost in the garden, Christ has restored. But the glory of Christ is greater <coughs> than the glory of Adam. Adam was just a natural man uh, in his natural glory, his habitat. All that God created in the beginning was all the natural world, natural men, natural things, and, and it was perfect and there was nothing wrong with it. It was all there was no sin, there was no corruption, everything was beautiful. And and Adam he just lived. I don't know if he really realizes how glorious he had it, how good he had it. He must not have realized how good he really had it. But that's all that he knew. See, that's all he knew. When he took of the fruit of forbidden fruit, his eyes were opened and he understood good and evil. He understood, you know, suddenly he saw things in a perverse way. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but the glory of Jesus Christ, see, Christ is not just a natural man, he's a spiritual man. Yes. When he came down from heaven, he became a man like us, but he was the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary, not 
Joseph. The Spirit would overshadow Mary, and she, she became the child with Christ. And so Christ, Paul said, is the second man, the second Adam from heaven. That which is natural is first, which is Adam. That which is natural is first. And that which is spiritual is second, yes. which is Christ himself. So Christ, the spiritual man, therefore, if Christ is a spiritual man, then the glory of the Spirit is greater than the glory of the man. The, <coughs> the glory of Christ and what He brings is greater than what the natural man had. Yes. How many can say amen? amen. 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 Yes. So praise God. Jesus then is, is lifted high and exalted by God because it is through Him and Him alone that man is restored back to fellowship with the Father. But not only do we have fellowship with Him, but we have, we have been made partakers of His nature, of His Spirit, has been given to us. That We don't, we don't see that in, in Adam, but we see that in Christ. Peter says that we were appointed to a blessing. God appointed us to receive a blessing. And the blessing is that of His Spirit. So the Spirit of God is the blessing that Christ brings. When He blessed Adam, He blessed all that He did. He blessed all of nature and all of creation to procreate and to multiply and to do good and do well and have all that they needed. And there was no need. And there was no corruption. There was no death. And, and <coughs> but praise God. But Jesus... <laughs> But Jesus, when He came, His blessing is greater than a natural blessing. The whole world today still enjoys those blessings of God that He gave to this earth because Jesus said He causes His reign to what? Fall on the good and the evil, mm -hmm. the just mm -hmm. and the unjust. God is still merciful and good to this natural world He created. And men go along if they'll follow the principles of, of God's law that He gave to, for men to live by, if they follow the principles of God's law, they find that, that, that there's a blessing there. And that if we follow the, the rules and regulations that God uh, gave to, to, to uh, rule and govern men in this world, they'll find that it works. That's why capitalism works. Because God created that. He didn't create communism. He created capitalism. If a man works, he, does, he, he, he can prosper, he can do well, he can, he can uh, increase his goods. If he gives, if he makes and gives, God said he'll increase all that he does. And he'll bless the work of his hands. Amen. Uh, he didn't say if you don't work, somebody else works and gives it to you. You know, so everybody will have the same. God never, never created that. That's a, that is of Satan, that's of man, it's of the devil, it's a lie, it's yes. not true. And yet there are those who want to promote that, those who want to, who are, who are bent on, on uh, uh, forcing that upon the world. But God didn't create that. He created the idea that if a man works, you know, that he will bless his work, he can he, multiply uh, his increase. And so that's God's way. So if we follow God's way, we're blessed. Yes. And we find wherever that, wherever that takes place in the world, that nation is blessed. It doesn't matter where it's at. Wherever that happens, it's blessed. So the blessings of God in the natural world are there. But the blessing that Christ brings is a blessing that men who don't know God don't have. They don't have that blessing. And that blessing is what? It simply boils down to this one thing. The blessing that He gives is He Himself. Yes. Personally, He Himself. Jesus is a personal Savior. Yes. He is a personal God. Right. He, is a, he is a personal uh, Lord and Master and Brother. Amen? Amen? He just doesn't want us to see Him as up on a throne, which He is. He is. He wants us to come to Him because and, and respect the idea that He is our Lord and our God and we come to Him. But He also wants us to realize that He is with us. He walks among us. Amen. He is one of us. Amen. He is our brother. He is our closest friend. Yes. Amen. He is our closest friend. Not only our Lord, 
their friend. Yes. Can you imagine having a king, a king of the universe, who is clothed in glory beyond what any man can ever dream of? He is the, he's the God of all, and yet it delights him to come down here and walk with us and put his arm around our shoulder and say, I'm your closest friend. Tell me all about your troubles and all your problems. Amen. Just tell me what's on your heart. Just yes. talk to me. Let's have a conversation here. Let's talk to each other. I want to get to know you, and I want you to get to know me. I want to be close to you. I want to be with you. I want to be. I want to live inside you. Yes, I want to share with you what I have. I want to give of you of myself. I just don't want to give you all these material blessings. I want to give you me. I want you to have me. Amen. I want you to know me. Not just the creation, but the creator. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Not just things I can do, but the doer. Yes. Amen. 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 You can have my peace to know me, as the old saying goes, you know, to know somebody is to love me. You know, to know me is to love me. Jesus said, Father, this is eternal life, that they might, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom You have sent. This is eternal life. Amen. Yes. What a great God we have. Amen. Man, I'll tell you what. You can't... Satan has blinded the world. Mm -hmm. Satan has, has kept the world in darkness about Christ. Because he knows that he is the true and living mm -hmm. God. And that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man can come to God except the Yes. Amen. There's no other way. Right. And Satan, in these days, he has been for the last past 2,000 years. If you study history, it's all throughout history. Satan has blinded the minds of men for centuries concerning Christ. But we're living in these days, in these times. I'm not sure what time we're living in. You know, we look around us, we see all the circumstances, all, all the things that's going on in the world. We say, surely these are the last times. Christ is coming soon. And of all the things that are happening, and we see signs of the times. I don't know, I don't know about all of that. I can see things happening, and I expect things to happen that the Bible says will happen. If I see it or whether I don't. <laughs> you know. But in this times in which we live, in the times in which we live, praise God. Satan, it seems to me. Is, is working harder than he ever has. Mm -hmm. Because so much light has come into the world, you know, since certain times in, in days gone by, when great things, God was doing great things in the world and bringing light to men and showing them the truth, bringing them out of darkness into the light of His grace and goodness, that He wanted them to know that He wants to have fellowship with them personally, that He's not a God far off and far away and hard to reach and you can't get to him. There must be certain things you got to do to get to him. No. He offers himself. He gives of himself freely. Amen. And he's, and he, you know, and he wants us to understand. And so as God, as God begins to bring light, what does he do? He begins to work upon the heart of man. How can a man come to God who's in the darkness unless there's some light? If he's blind, he can't see. He doesn't know where he's going. If he's full of the world and full of self and full of self uh, selfishness and self righteousness or whatever it is that, that the case may, he he he's he has no heart for God. Israel of old had no heart for God. He gave him the law. He gave him all that that, that that he gave him from Mount Sinai, but they didn't have a heart for God. So what does God have to do? He has to, he has to do something about our heart. He has to do something about the spirit of man. And so Jesus himself said, no man can come to me except the spirit of my Father drawing. But he said, all that the Father gives to me will come to me. And he who comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. So what is he saying? All that come to Christ is a gift of God. It's a gift of the Father. He said, all of these are mine. God is saying, the Father is saying, all of these are mine. And now they are yours. 
And Jesus said, all who comes to me, I will definitely, I will absolutely, surely not cast them out. They are mine. And he says, not one of them will be lost. I will save every one of them. Not one will be lost. There was one that was lost. We know about him. Judas, the betrayer. Jesus said that himself. The son of perdition was lost. But he said, all that you've given me, Father, I have kept through thy name. Do you believe this morning that you are kept yes. by Jesus Christ himself? Yes. I don't have to worry about that, do I? Mm -hmm. He keeps me. And you know what else he does? He keeps my heart. He keeps my thoughts. He keeps my intentions right. Sometimes I want to go the other way. Sometimes I want to do what I want to do. Sometimes I want to, you know, I want to get busy with something else. But he's always redirecting my heart and my mind. He's always bringing me back to himself. Yes. It's like when you're married. If your husband or your wife truly loves you, and they see you wandering off, <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> the love they have for you yeah. is going to redirect, and you better believe it. <laughs> it's going to redirect your thoughts and your heart back to them. Yes. Amen. Amen. They become jealous. Christ becomes jealous. Yes. God is a jealous God. He doesn't want us wandering off somewhere following after something else. He wants us to look at Him and Amen. love Him. Amen. 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 And so, so, he, so, not only does He keep me and save me, but He keeps my thoughts. He redirects my heart back to Him. And it's His love. Is God able to do that? Let me tell you, I love my wife and, and my wife loves me. But God loves us even greater. Yes. We love our children, don't we? Yes. There's nothing in this world we wouldn't do for our children. But God loves us even greater. Amen. And I can't imagine it. I can't imagine that someone who could love me more than I could love my own children. I would die for them. I'd do anything for them. God loves me even greater. Yes. So if God is able to keep and save me, then His love is able to keep my Amen. thoughts and my heart Amen. and my love for Him. Yes. We love Him because He first loved yes. us. Yes. How do I know that I love God? Do you love God this morning? Yes. 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 Raise your hand if you love Him. Yes. Amen. Amen. You love, I love God. Amen. Why do you love Him? Well, I love Him because I'm going to there. No, you love Him because He loved you. Right? You wouldn't know one thing about loving God. Not one. Well, we all have them. No, you don't. Mm -hmm. You weren't born with that love. Mm -hmm. You weren't born with that kind of love. Mm -hmm. The reason why we love God, whether we realize it or not, is because He first loved us. And His love for us is so great that it draws us to Himself. Yes. His love for us is so overwhelming that He turns our hearts. You know, I remember when, well, do you remember when you first saw your wife or your husband? And you saw them for the first time? Maybe, I hope, I hope, I hope all of you did. Well, three of you, three couples here. <laughs> I hope you did. When you first saw them, that you, you said, well, there's something about that individual. There's something about, you know, there's something about John. There's something about Marty. There's something about Bernice. Mm -hmm. Something about Bill. There's something about Joe. There's something about Vicky. There's something about, you know, I can't say that, that poor old Gerald has never been married. <laughs> <laughs> But there was something about them that drew you to them, did it not? <clears throat> now, some people say, well, what did you get married for love? What did you get married for? <laughs> what, what is it that caused you to be married? I'm talking about love now. I'm not talking about anything. I'm talking about love. Love is a, is a powerful force. It's like a magnet. It draws and it captivates. And it not only, not only does it do that, but it reassures and it brings comfort. It gives, well, you might say kind of a peace. Well, I finally found her. <laughs> I've been searching all my life. Now I finally found her, you know. So it gives you assurance. It gives you peace of mind. You kind of come to the end of your journey, end of your searching. And now you found them. And now you know that they're yours. That's what it is with God. I found him. I've come to the end of my search. How did I do that? I tell you how. God revealed Himself 
to you. Yes, he yes. revealed his love to you. Yes. He showed you in his own way, and each one of us may be different. Each one of us, God shows in a different way. Yes. You know, it was like they say, there's many roads that lead to God. That's what it means. We only know there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. But yes. what I'm talking about, how he does that. Yes. God reveals his love and his goodness to us in different ways, but we see it, and we know. That's for me. That's it. That's what I want. I've got to have it. I know that I know that I know. Mm -hmm. No one will convince me otherwise. I love Romans 8. It's my favorite chapter in the Bible. Where Paul said, again, I am convinced. I am convinced that nothing can separate us from the love that God has showed us through Christ Jesus. I'm convinced that there's nothing in heaven and earth height, their depth, or any other creature can separate us from His love. That's powerful. Yes. Yes. That's powerful. Can God keep me? Can God save me? And not only can He save me, can He keep me? Yes, He can. How? By that love. Yes. How do you keep your wife? With love. Okay, yes. Amen. Well, if I just give her everything she wants, <laughs> no wonder you're having so much trouble with me. <laughs> Man, Lord, you know, it's not giving things. <laughs> it's giving of yourself. Yes, yes it is. Right? Amen. It's giving your heart. Yes. It's giving of your time. It's giving of what you are yourself as an individual. Mm -hmm. When you take the time and you're patient... <laughs> And your understanding, <laughs> and your forgiving. Hello. You know what it'd be good for all married couples to do every single day. If you don't do it, you should do it. I do it with my wife every day, and it works. What? Walk up behind her wherever she's at, give her a big hug, kiss her on the neck, kiss her on the cheek, tell her you love her. Well, I don't feel like it. Do it anyhow. <laughs> well, I ain't got time for that. Take the time. You got time. Take the time. Every single day. Don't make it a law. I'm not trying to make it a law because that, if you do it as a law, it won't work either. Mm -hmm. No. Do it out of love. Yes. Do it because you're mindful. You know God is mindful of us. Yes. He's mindful. Well, Lord, if you just... Sometimes we come to God and we pray as if God forgot all about us. <laughs> God forgot about us. And we got to bring heaven down there. Where are you at? And bang on the door. And say, God, are you up there anywhere? Are you listening to me? <laughs> God is forever, <coughs> continually mindful of us. Yes. yes are you mindful of your husband and wife? Are you yes. mindful mm -hmm. of your children? Does a day go by that you don't think about them? Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, you may get busy doing the way. I'll get busy doing things, you know, and, and we're not thinking of everything all the time. Right. But I'm talking about on a continual yes. basis. Like Paul said, pray always. Yes. When he said that, he didn't mean pray 24 hours a day. Right. He just meant be in a continual spirit of prayer. Yes. Yes. There will always be a time through the day, through the night, whenever, that you'll always have a time to pray. And say, mm -hmm. God, that's what he means. Being mindful. But God is greater than we are. <laughs> He's greater than I am. You know why I say that? Because God said to Himself, You may forget your suckling child, but I will never forget you. Amen. 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 Hello. Somebody yes. says, Oh, I love my children. I love them. I love them to death. I never. No. God says, You may forget your suckling child. And you do. I remember when our children were babies in the other room. Sometimes you forget they're there. Amen. Until they start crying. <laughs> And then you get up. And then, well, how about when you're sleeping? They're not on your mind when you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. But when that baby cries, it wakes you right up, don't it? You yes. to sleep. But God says you may forget whether you're sleeping or just busy doing other things, busy about other things in life. You forget about them for a moment, for a second, for, for a little bit. He said, but I will never forget you. Amen. Think about that. Amen. You are on God's mind Continually. Is God able to do that? Yes. It's a cinch. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cinch. God can think about seven billion plus people all at the same time. Yes. yes and know each one of them who they are and what they're doing. All of them. And he's got them on his mind. 
I'm only using that number because that's about what the population is. But not all people are his, so he thinks about those that are his. The world, uh, you know, God knows all about the world, but he says, I don't even know these people. The time will come and we'll stand before him and he'll say, I don't know you. I never knew you. I never knew you. Sad, sad. Oh, yes. He put that post on in his Facebook. Mm -hmm. These are the saddest words mm -hmm. that men will ever hear. Yeah. Depart from me, I never knew you. Yes. Horrible, most horrible words that you could ever hear. But God knows those that are His. You know, we all say, I'm so glad that I know the Lord. How many glad you know the Lord? Oh, yes. You know Him? You know Him? Yeah. Yes. You know greater than that? He knows you. Yeah, amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. He knows you. That's the ticket. Yes. <laughs> That's the ticket to glory. Yes. Yes. He knows me. Because I'm His. And He is mine. He is mine because He gave Himself to me. Mm -hmm. He is mine because He said I can have it. He is mine because He imparted that to me. Mm -hmm. This is the blessing of Jesus. This is the blessing. It's not just the material things. God will bless us. And I believe God wants us to prosper and have things and do good and do well in everything that we do. The Bible says that He will bless us that way. I wish above all things, John said, you prosper, being healthy, and that your soul will prosper. God wants us to prosper in all that we do. And He will bless the work of our hands. But the greatest blessing of all. Amen. The greatest blessing of all. God, you can have all these other things. Give me Jesus. I love that song, right? I've sung here a few times. Mm -hmm. In the morning when I rise. In the morning when I rise. In the morning when I rise. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. And when I am alone. And when I am alone. When I come to die, and when I come to die, and when I come to die, give me Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can have all this world, but give me Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. This is the blessing. This is the blessing. Give me His Spirit. Give me His person. Give me His presence. I'd rather be in His presence. I'd rather be in His presence than to be with anybody else. How is it possible? How is it possible that after all these hundreds of years that Christ has had such an effect on us that way? We have never seen him. We never heard his voice. We don't know the shape of his face, the color of his eyes. We don't. We haven't <coughs> seen him. You know, the artists have given us an idea of what he looks like. We all have a different idea. Some things he's black and white and red and purple and pink and <laughs> and uh, every other color. We don't really know. But we know that He is. What kind of effect has Jesus had on us? To be able for me to be able to feel the way I do and say what I do and know that it's your... And I'm not saying it's because Grandma said it. Well, I'm not. I'm not. You know, my mama was... Uh, you know, my mama, she went to church and, uh, you know, so... Uh, no. No. When you talk like that, you haven't had a real experience for yourself. But when you know for yourself, when you know for yourself, see what God is doing. I believe, I believe that God is 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 bringing people out of their denominational barriers. Mm -hmm. 
and showing us that we are all children of God. Yes. It doesn't matter what church we go to. The question is, do you know Jesus? Amen. Amen. How could Jesus have that kind of effect? Because His Spirit ever lives. His Spirit, He lives just as surely right now. And it's surely right here with us right now as He was when He walked the streets of Jerusalem or Galilee or Judea. He's here just as surely now because He is everlasting. And what He gives and imparts is everlasting. Oh, He's so great. His Spirit is everlasting. His spirit is, his presence is everlasting. His love is everlasting. All that he says and does is everlasting. It never grows old. It never wears out. It never fades. It never stops. It never dies. It never, it will live on and on and on. Jesus said, my words will live forever. The world, heaven and earth will pass away. My words will never pass away. Amen. And the spirit of God is eternal. We can't see him. I look for him sometimes. I can't see him. I'll go out at night sometime and pray and look up at the stars and sky. At night is beautiful and I'm, I'm searching for his face. <laughs> Lord, where are you? I wish I could see your face. I look at the stars and talk to God. I say, God, that's, I know that's not you. I know the stars is not you. I know the universe is not you. That, that's not you, but you're there. You're there. If I can just see you. I know that you're there. He's everlasting. This is the blessing. The everlasting God gives to us everlasting life. Oh, that's the blessing. He gave Adam a great blessing in this natural material world. But Christ gave us the blessing from an eternal world. A world that will never pass away. And never grow old. Never fade away. Did you know that what we have in Christ now is part of that? It's part of what is there in heaven. He brought heaven down to earth. He brought heaven down to earth. Heaven kissed the earth. And I got caught in the middle of the smack. Yes. <laughs> heaven kissed the earth through Christ. The blessing of heaven is on this earth through Christ. Through regeneration of the Spirit of God. Being born again, this is the blessing. Hallelujah. There's nothing greater. There's nothing more that we can ask for or want. How much more can we have than God who gives? himself. There's nothing more. But that's everything. When I say nothing more, <laughs> and the poor words, for God is all in all. All things proceed from Him. <coughs> everything proceeds from God. And the blessing He gives to us mortals through what Jesus did transcends all. It's above all. It's above all. It's above all. Whenever somebody asks you, how are you doing? Always say, I'm blessed. Amen. I'm a blessed person. Not because you live in a fine home or make good money or have everything you want. Why? Those are good things. Yes, and they're blessings. Yes, they are. But what if those things were taken away? What if suddenly something happened in this world and you lost everything? Would you still feel like you're blessed? Mm -hmm. You can and will be if you know that you have that blessing that will never, the world cannot take it away. The economy can't take it away. The president can't take it away. Congress can't take it away. Nothing can take it away. Ideals can't take it away. Man can't take it away. Because God has given it. It's eternal. It's eternal. Eternal in here. It's eternal in my soul. It's eternal, eternal, eternal. 
It's what, it's what keeps me. It's what guides me. It's what holds me. It's what loves me. It's what energizes me. It's what strengthens me. And all that I am. I am what I am by the grace of God. Because He loved me. Amen. I am what I am by the grace of God. Because God loved me. Hallelujah. Don't ever question why these things are happening to you in life. How many times have we done that? Lord, why is it happening? Great. You know, like children at home, they don't realize how blessed they are just to have a home. <laughs> they don't realize just how blessed they are to have good parents that love them. Yes. Well, why do I have everything I want? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Why is this happening to me? Why is this? Oh, you don't understand, child. You have a home. You're a part of a family. You have parents that love you and care for you and are there for you 24 hours. No matter what happens, count yourself blessed. Because we'll make it through. We'll get through somehow together. And that's what God's telling us. We're going to get through, son. I guarantee you, we're going to make it through. Hallelujah. Because I'm your father. And I'm greater than all. <laughs> and I got a handle on this. <laughs> And you're more than the conqueror through me. More than a conqueror. Don't worry about it. Come to me. Let's talk about it. I know what's going on. Trust me. I'm going to work it out for you. I've already got to work that. Just trust me. I know exactly what's going to unfold and what's going to happen. Trust me. And this is the lesson God wants us to learn. To learn to trust Him more. He's going to work it out. He keeps us in that love. He keeps us in that confidence. Why? I'm part of Him. I'm the family. And God don't make deals. I'm going to make a deal He can't refuse. No. Tell you what, God's got it all fixed <laughs> for you and me. It's all fixed. Well, I don't understand why. Trust Him. Why does God have Him? Trust Him. Yes. You'll learn why. If there's some special reason that you need to know why, God will let you know why. Otherwise, trust Him. Tell Him about it. Cry about it. Sob about it. Stay up all night and pull your hair out about it. Worry about it. Whatever you want to do about it, but trust Him. Yes. <laughs> when it's all said and done, trust Him. Yes. He's waiting on you. He's waiting on me. Amen. So many times I've come to the Lord in prayer and I've asked Him for things and something heavy on my heart and I've had doubts and fears and so on troubling me and, 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 and Lord would just sit there and listen to me. I didn't just see Him sitting there. Are you through? <laughs> Are you through crying now? Are you worried now? But didn't you hear me? He didn't, he didn't answer a word. It's like he never even heard it. You through now? Well, I thought this would impress you, God. <laughs> Aren't you impressed by my worry? Aren't you impressed by my... Uh, did you see that I'm really sincere and serious about him? <laughs> did you care about me? It's as if he doesn't even hear that. Are you through? Now, this is what I say to you. See, God is not moved by fear, doubt, worry, frustration. He settles our nerves, <laughs> He levels the plane, He calms us down. He reassures our hearts before Him. Now, and then when I pray and I've gone to all that, then suddenly my heart begins to break and I begin to re rejoice in Him and thank Him because I know that He hears me, that He's concerned and loves me, and He's going to work this out. Yeah. 
He reassures my heart. See, in faith. So, so now that I'm in faith, believing Him, now I can rejoice. Now that I believe Him, I can rejoice in Him. Now that I believe Him, I can love Him. Now that I know, I can praise Him. Before I couldn't because I was a, I was just self-centered. I was only concerned about me and how I felt, and what I wanted. Now I trust Him. I see Him. Now I can love Him and rejoice in Him and praise Him and thank Him. And go on my merry way, knowing he's got everything in his hand and everything is going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. Yes. Stand with me. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.